I'm telling them real quick, we've had it. I'm sorry, would y'all leave those, uh, uh, Dwight, if you leave those in your chairs, I'll know which ones to sanitize. I apologize. Them. So if you'll just leave those by your chairs or in your chairs, I'll know which ones to sanitize. So we've had a technical glitch here this morning. Just throw it down one chair. Uh, and so we're going to uh, have a surprise survey. So if you'll be turning your Bibles to Matthew 9. I'd like to share with you out of God's Word this morning. Um, so uh, I'm going to do this extemporaneously with you. And just for the fact that, 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 that it's a privilege we have of uh, speaking to some folks that you know, hear this, I'm going to stand over here today. So you can, can you hear me okay? All right, at least that part is working. But if you look at Matthew 9, I'm going to read it to verse 1. Getting out of the boat, Jesus crossed the sea and came to his own city. And they, and they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed, seeing their faith. And that's going to be my focus this morning with you. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, Take courage, son, your sins are forgiven. And some of the scribes said to themselves, This fellow blasphemes, and Jesus knowing their thoughts. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've got to tell you, that's a little scary to me. And, 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 and it might be to you. If God knows my thoughts, then that guy that just cut me off, even though I didn't say a word, you, you stupid bum, you crumb, oh my. <laughs> Or something close to that is what I thought. Um, so God, so him knowing their thoughts, said to them, Why are you thinking evil where? In your hearts. Now, see, people get hung up on this thing. They think about their soul and they think about this and that. But you know what? When our mind gets polluted, when our heart gets polluted, there's a problem. And that's what we're going to talk about briefly this morning. When our mind gets polluted, when our heart gets, get, gets corrupted, then we began to go down the wrong direction. Now, I'm just going to say it out loud. It, but even before this crazy pandemic happened, we had a lot of people. Go, we had Fiesta over here. And I've said to you before, I bet we have most of a thousand people pass our door on Sundays, some Sundays. Because when I open that door and look out there, I see at least 200 plus people sitting in that parking lot. And then we, and we all know that we constantly have traffic out here in Shady Grove. And Sonic is right next door. And that people are getting breakfast, doing whatever. Mama's Daughters is right under. Brahms is right over there. You know where I'm going with all of this. So we have a lot of traffic that's passing our doors. Plus this this huge neighborhood that's to our, our northeast and then, of course, to our south, where a couple of you live. Now, there are literally, I, at one time I knew how many people live there, but there's something like 6,000 people immediately around us. You go down to Elliott School and you go up north to, uh, what is it, Pioneer? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, or, or even if you just stop at... at uh, and uh, uh, the railroad tracks, what's that? What is it? Rock Island. So when we send out our, 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 our once, once or twice a year, when we send out the advertisements, it goes into 20,000 homes. How many times has somebody walked into our church with one of those flyers in their hands? Two, two to three times. That's right. One is one of them. One is one of them. 20,000 homes, and how many people are coming to church? So that's my point to you this morning, is that, that there's a lot of need and a lot of understanding, but we live by faith. So this guy is, is coming before him. He's a paralytic. He's lying on a bed, and, and the scribes are saying, what, who does he think he is? And so Jesus says to him, okay, look at verse 5. Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk, paralyzed man. And but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, then he said to the paralytic, 
get up, pick up your bed, and go home. And he did. Now, there's an implication here that part of the reason that he may be paralyzed is because of his sins. Hmm, that's interesting. Because of our sins that we may have sickness in our lives. So does sin corrupt not only our minds and our heart, but what? It corrupts our body as well. And that's not the first time. You remember the, the man who was paralyzed to, by the waters? He was waiting for the angels to stir the waters there uh, at the pool of, of, of uh, not pool of Siloam, Bethsaida. Pool of Bethsaida. You remember? And, and, and the disciples asked Jesus, this, for what reason, for what sin has this man been crippled? And Jesus said, not for any sin that he has done, but for the glory of God. So again, there's an implication there that, that sometimes our sins can corrupt our bodies and our minds. But, I, but in doing this, why did he say, go back up to verse 2. He says, seeing their faith. Now, quite honestly, this may be the story um, uh, in, the, in, the, in, in a couple of the other Gospels where the people let him down through the, 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 uh, uh, the roof. Because he says, and seeing their faith, not just his faith, but their faith. So this may be where you have the four friends that brought him there. Seeing their faith, Jesus says, I forgive you of your sins. And then he heals them. How did, why did he heal them? Because of their faith. And then he goes on to, to uh, heal a, uh, a tax collector, and then we're talking about fasting. And then I want you to go over to uh, verse 18. And again, uh, Jesus is probably um, about six miles away from Capernaum at this point. He is um, he's in Magdala. He's in Magdala. I've been to Magdala. And he, in verse 18, he says, While he was saying these things, a synagogue official came and bowed down before him and says, my, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. Jesus got up and began to follow him, and so did the disciples. Now, church family, you have to understand something. First of all, I'm impressed that this Jewish synagogue man. Now, I can't, let me just go ahead and say it out loud. Women did not hold a high place in their, in their society. And, and, and this little girl has died. And this synagogue official goes at least six miles and finds Jesus. For some reason, he knew where he would be found. He's a synagogue Official, which means he was probably in charge of the synagogue, who hated Jesus. They hated Jesus at this point. But he humbled himself with faith. He went to Jesus and he says, it implies here, I have the faith that if you will come to me, if you will come home with me and lay your hands on my daughter, I know she'll be healed and that's why I've come all this way. And Jesus says, okay, I'll come, I'll come home with you. And he gets up and begins to walk out with him and begins that, that about six-mile uh, trek back to the, to the area of Capernaum. Uh, and then in verse 20 it says, a, And a woman who had been suffering from a hemorrhage for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she was saying to herself, if I only touch his garment, I will get well. But Jesus turning and seeing her said, Daughter, take courage. Your what? Say it out loud. Amen. Your faith has made you well. And all at once, the woman was made well. Now, we all know that this image was probably a gynecological issue. And, and you can just imagine what she has gone through for 12 years. All these poultices and all of these things. And, and, and if I can just be real frank, people up in her business. For 12 stinking long years, 
None of it works. But she says, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know he will heal me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking to you this morning about faith. And, and I'm telling you that, that we're going to need some of that as we step into these next days. Now, I don't like, I think the, the official in, in Washington who said this out loud was stupid for saying it, but he was right. It doesn't matter who wins in November. There's going to be Antifa doing stupid stuff and making a big hoopla, especially if our president wins. They're going, to, they're going to make a big deal out of it. And I'm just telling you, when you can watch all of a sudden, here at the very, very end of, 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 of his presidency, we all of a sudden are getting these peace accords with Israel. Have I read something about that in my Bible? Wow. That's a red flag, isn't it, Kathy? We're getting there, folks. I'm telling you, that's why we're seeing so much chaos. I know that it's disconcerting. I know that we look around us, and Pam, and I know that it says that we're going to have more and more crime. And I know that that's hard for us to watch. But we're there. We've been reading about it. The great late, the late great planet Earth is here. And so he touched, he touched the garment. And healing went out of Jesus. And you know, in, in the other, uh, other verses, in John specifically, he said, Who touched me? And the disciples, they kind of said, Are you nuts? People are, we have, we're having to push our way through the crowd. Everybody's touching you, Lord, they wanted to say. But they said, How do we know there's so many? But he knew that somebody with faith had touched him. Folks, it's our faith. Jesus looks on the heart, he knows our mind, and we need to believe that by our faith she was healed. And so he said, take courage, your faith has made you well. In verse 23, when Jesus came into the official's house and saw the flute players in the crowd in noisy disorder, now that's what they did, they would, they would lament very loudly. Matter of fact, they had, even had pain mourners. So, Here's an official, so you know that they're putting on the dog for this official and really trying to make it, you know, him all, all this mourning, if you will. So he, he, he says, get them out of here. Leave for the girl has not died, but she's asleep. Now, they laugh at him and even mock him and say, I think I know what a dead person looks like. She's dead. You just got here. We know. We've been here. In verse 25, when the crowd had been sent out, he entered and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. Now, I think it's John that says she was 12 years old. The news spread throughout the land. Now, church family, I'm talking to you this, this morning about faith. And that our hope and our belief is in Jesus Christ. Do you remember the centurion there in Capernaum that came to Jesus, or he came from Capernaum? And he came to Jesus, he came from Capernaum, I want to be sure about that I say that correctly, to find Jesus. And he says, my, my servant boy is in serious sickness, and he may even be dying. Will you come heal him? And then Jesus says, sure, I'll come. And then the centurion, the centurion, Roman centurion, says, sir, I am not worthy to, to receive you. Now this guy, the centurion's kind of a big dog. He says, I'm not worthy to receive you. If you'll just stand right here and by your, by your authority, cast your, your power and say to my, my, my slave boy, be healed, he'll be healed. And Jesus looked at the crowd and said, I have not seen any of you with this kind of faith, but this Gentile comes here and he, with his faith, I'm going, I'm going to go with him. Or I'm going, to, I'm going to answer his question. I'm going to answer his plea. And Jesus said, what you have come here for and asked me is done. Why? Because of his faith. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the point that we've got to understand. 
God knows our hearts. He knows what we're thinking. He knows the plans that he has for us, we read last week, last Wednesday. And they're plans for good and not for evil. And we know by our faith that we believe and God is going to hear us. We know by our faith that we can pray and Jesus is going to walk with us. And we know by our faith that we can ask the Holy Spirit to take our prayers and interpret them to the Father. And they will be heard and understood and answered. And God knows exactly what's going on in your life. Amen. And you can believe that. And you can have the assurance that what God is going to do in your life is going to be just right. Is that good enough for today? I don't, want, I don't want to get you too stirred up because you might go home and start spreading the word. Amen? Amen. <laughs> okay, let's bow. Heavenly Father, we do need your faith. We need your hope. We need your understanding that we are and going to continue to be what you want us to be. So that we are, that we're the servants you want us to be. And that we'll become the people that you want us to be. But God, our hearts... Lord, we've seen and heard a lot of stuff. We can hardly watch a movie without bad words. We can hardly watch a sitcom without sexual in innuendos. Cleanse us, heal us, protect us. We love you and celebrate you in the most gracious name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing us today. In Christ's name we pray and love you so much. Church family, I say this every week. I'm going to be right here if I can bless you in any way. I'd like to meet you, pray with you, if you need me to do that with you. But you can always pray right where you are. God bless you and take care of you. And I'll meet you here if you need to meet me. Paul, lead us uh, in, a, in the first verse of 